respect for their father and her own husband. A communication line that will make her children to have respect for their father, to value their father, to honor their father, to respect their father. To highly esteem their father and also to defend the family, not to bring the children just to herself. That is what so many women do. Not just to bring the children to herself so that the children will just see her as the only good person why the man is what? A bad man, no. So let there be a working communication system that will be profitable to both parties. Praise God. You know the children stay small or spend more of their time with the woman. So the woman should play more role. More role in educating the children, communicating with them, giving them vital information that will help them to become better people in the society, in the house of God, to the glory of the Father. Praise God. The, the woman also have the responsibility to help train the children to know their responsibility as they are growing up. As they are growing up, the woman should help to train the children to know their responsibility, to know what to do. To know what to do and what not to do. Letting them know about who they are about to become. Letting them know who they are. As young boys, as young girls, as children who are growing up to be teenage, to be adults, teaching them at every stage of their life. Letting them know what life is all about. Educating them. Take, for instance, a male child that is growing up, the mother should tell him that he's becoming a man. Talk to him to begin to act the way he ought to act. Encouraging him. Telling him what to do and what not to do. Also to the girl child. Telling her that she's becoming a woman. What to do and what not to do. And as the girl child is growing, they are faced with several challenges. They begin to see signs of maturity, signs of puberty. It is the duty of the woman to educate them, talk with them, not shouting outside, not, not shouting outside. You could be shouting but not communicating. Praise God. A woman could be what? Shouting but not what? Not communicating. You could be shouting but you are not communicating. To communicate is beyond shouting. You need to let them know that they are growing to maturity. Tell them the signs they will see. And if they see those signs, they should know that a thing like this is about to happen. And if they see it, they should let you know. And as they get those signs, they come back to you and let you know. You now tell them what next to do and instruct them. Guide them strictly. If you do like this, it will bring disgrace to you. As a woman, now you are a woman, now you are matured. This is what you ought to do. This is what you ought not to do. You also give them sex education give them sex education. I'm not saying that the father will not play the role, but the woman will do it better. Because they are freer to tell you some things. They open up to you more than their father. So you tell them about sex education. Let them know. Praise God. Tell them that there's no end to the pleasure
definition of sex. You hear what I'm saying? Tell them that there's no what? There's no end to the pleasure of sex. There's no end to it. If you continue to say, ah, sex is pleasurable, let me follow it, it will destroy your life. It will what? It can make a person useless. We tell them that you have to have self-control to manage it, to control it, to make sure you, you discipline yourself and never allow a man to touch certain part of your body. Praise God. Never. Never sit on the lap of a man, for example. Never allow a man to lap you. You hear what I'm saying now? You never allow what? A man to lap you. You never allow a man to lap you. Never allow a man to lap you. Even you, the father, are the father. You don't lap your daughter. There are certain things you should not do, even as a father. Let alone another person. Then as a young man, growing up, don't lap a woman. Praise God. You tell them that if anything happened to you at this age, there's any chance of you being pregnant. And being pregnant means that it's going to bring reproach to the family, it's going to bring reproach to yourself, it's going to disrupt your educational career. Inform them well. Praise God. Also teach them how to keep house. Teach both the male and the female. Teach them how. Some people say, ah, it's a man. There's nothing like it's a man. If you can eat in the house, then you must walk. Did you hear what I said? If you can eat in the house, then you must what? You must walk. You must walk. As they are growing up, we begin to teach them after eating, they should know how to remove their plate and clean up where they stayed to eat. How to clean up the dining table. You teach them. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? This is the mistake so many persons have made and so many are still making it. So many are still making it. They, they, they feed the house with house help. House help with sweep. Has help with mob, has help with parboil meat, has help with cook, has help with serve them. The only thing their children knows how to do is to, is to put on clothes, to remove it, dump it. They can't even wash their stockings. <laughs> you are preparing them as an atomic bomb. Is somebody here not say? You are preparing them as what? As an atomic bomb. You are preparing them as, as a shame, as a shame, and as a reproach, both to you and to, to whosoever that will meet them tomorrow as a wife or as a husband. You teach them how to respect, teach them how to keep house, teach them after eating, tell them, remove your plates. Where they remove it, tell them, come back, come and clean it, whether it's a man or woman. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You teach them. You begin to teach them how to wash their clothes. You begin to teach them. You begin to teach them how to wash their undies. Supervising them. You begin to follow them up to make sure that they are not dirty. They are not living a dirty life. Some of them will remove their undies and drop. They remove and drop. They remove and drop. A time will come, the thing will finish. No one. You monitor them. Is somebody here I'm saying? Some of them will soak. The thing will be there for two, three days. This I will wash it. When will they wash it? So you teach them as you are removing it, you are what? You are washing. You begin to teach them not to accept excuse for any reason. To do what they ought to do. No matter the circumstances surrounding them. You begin to teach them. That is the duty of a woman. When you are praying, God, I want to be a woman, I want to marry, I want to, that means be prepared for work. You should be what? Prepared for work. Prepared for work. Teach them character development. 
children should respect your house help. What so many women do, even so many fathers do, in their presence, their son or their daughter will insult their house help. It's not an offense. If the house help make any move to beat the child, the, the parent will rise up against the, the house help. That is error. That is, uh, the house help is a human being. Praise God. And it's an elder to your children. They are elders to their children. So teach your children never to insult their elder. I see, I see some people. There are neighbors around us. Sometimes we'll be in the house hearing what is happening in their house. And I would like to say, which kind of life is this? A little boy will be in the presence of the parents abusing the senior. And the mother will not say, shut up. Come here, what did you say? And the woman will be there, the child will be talking, abusing the children. So what the children normally do is that they will allow the parents to go out. At times when the children, when the parents go out, then the little one will not want to do the same thing. They will not use the opportunity. And they confess him for all the evil they committed. Praise God. So you teach them, teach your children, you help. You are a helper. Don't encourage your children to live a life that is dishonest. Never do that. That they love your children does not mean you should support them when they are wrong. Letting your children know that they love them is to, is to prove to them that you will not be on their side whenever they do anything wrong. That is a sign that they love their children. Praise God. Never be offended when others correct their children. Some mothers get offended. They get so offended. Some even go as far as fighting. Don't do that. If somebody here don't say, never go and fight your neighbor because your child was corrected. To me, I see that anybody that corrected my child loves me. You hear what I'm saying? Now, if the person did it in a way the person ought not to, you can talk to the person later. You hear what I'm saying? You can talk to the person later in the absence of your own child. And never gossip your, your neighbor or, or your husband before your children. Never condemn, never be complaining about your husband before your children. You hear what I'm saying? Never report your husband to your children. What did I say? Never report your husband to your children. Never gossip your husband before your children. Never be complaining about your husband before your children. Never. Never tell your children how you are suffering in the house, how you are the one buying food, how you are the one doing this, how you are the one buying clothes for yourself, how you are the one you are making them to nurse in feeling against their father. Is somebody listening to me? Yes. Never curse your children. Never what? Never rain curses on your children. They will just do little things. You will curse them. You wake up at midnight. You are cursing them. Some women go as far as going naked to curse their children. Which kind of wickedness is that? Some women go as far as lifting up their two breasts and they are cursing their children. Which kind of wickedness is that? What do you want to achieve? Praise God. Let me say this quickly. If your own mother treated you badly, never transfer it to your children. Never make the same mistake of your mother. If your mother never gave you some training and now you have your own children, your mother treated you bad, never treat your, your own children the way you say, after all, my mother treated me like this. I'm going to treat you more than the way my mother treated me. Never do that. Praise God. God gave, your, gave them to you as, as a blessing and you are just caretaker. You are to take care of them, nurturing them in the way of the Lord and presenting them to God. To make sure, the number one duty is to make sure they don't go to hell. Is to make sure they don't worship Satan. Is to make sure they serve God. 
to him that have ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hallelujah. A woman was created to help a man walk in dominion. You are created to help a man walk in dominion. You are created to walk to help a man walk in dominion. When God created man, he said that they may have dominion. God created man to have dominion. So as a woman, it is your responsibility to help the man walk in dominion. To walk in dominion spiritually, to walk in dominion physically, to walk in dominion financially, to walk in dominion academically, to walk in dominion materially. To walk in dominion. That is your duty. To help the man to walk in dominion. Yes. Yes. If you understand your purpose of being a woman, you will thank God for making you a woman. A woman is not a second class citizen. A woman is not a second class creature. The woman is not a second class creature and should not be treated as such. Praise God. So, you should know that you are to help your husband to walk in dominion. Walking in dominion. Living a life of dominion. Walking in dominion and living a life of dominion. Always on his side. Always supportive. Always encouraging. Always backing him up. Always telling him that he can make it. Appreciating his effort. Steering him up to do more. Appreciating what he's doing. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Making him not to feel inferior before other men. Letting him know that he is a man. Not inciting him to hate others. Making him to realize that he can rule his own world. Making him to know that he is valuable to you. Praise God. God. You know, there are things that women feel that, I said it last time and I want to say it again, they feel that if they tell a man that they are belittling themselves, no. When you are telling a man those things, you are winning their heart. You are winning their heart. And all I'm teaching we take humility. That's why women that have refused to humble themselves have had problems in life. Praise God. Somebody will say, ask me, what of if I'm doing these things? The man is not appreciating it. What of if I'm doing these things? The man is not acknowledging it. Let me tell you something. I've said it before, and I want to repeat it. There's no how you'll be living your life to make your husband to honor God, that God will not make that man to honor you. I've said it before, and I'm saying it again. There's no how God who searched the heart of man will see that you are working and making effort to make your husband to love him, to serve him, to fear him. And the same God will now be there sitting to see the man not loving you. It's not possible. It's not possible. Humble yourself to acknowledge these things. To acknowledge the things you need to do. Humble yourself. Praise God. A woman was created to be a wife to her husband. created to be a wife. That is the purpose of God is for every woman to be a wife. To be a wife, not a housewife. Praise
please God. To be what? To be a wife, but not what? Not a housewife. Say a housewife. No, 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 no. The woman was created to be a wife. To be a wife. To be a stakeholder in the family. You know, some culture have so much reduced women. Some culture have so much insulted the dignity of women. The word of God is against it and I'm against it. The woman should be a stakeholder in the family. Should be a stakeholder. A stakeholder. Praise God. As a wife. As a wife. Which means as a woman playing the role of a wife, you should be the closest person to your husband. You should be what? You should be the closest person to your husband. Be the closest person to your husband. You are the one that have been licensed to see the nakedness of your husband and never take it for granted. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? See it as a privilege. <laughs> you know, these are the things that make women to look down on a man. What I am teaching now is what makes some women to do what? To look down on a man. Say, after all, who are you? I know you in and out. They will not, they, when they are talking to the man, they will not give their lips like this. <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> that is, that is, is it not you? That is, what they mean is that I know you. I have, I have size to you. I know everything what? About you. He don't behave like that. It's a privilege. It's what? It's a privilege and it's an honor. God gave it to you as an honor. You should honor it. Praise God. You should what? You should honor it. See, see, when you listen to what I'm teaching you and apply it to your life, you won't fail. As a young lady, listen to what I'm teaching you. You won't fail. At times, I was like wondering, why is it that some women are crying for husband? Why will you be crying for husband? When men are looking for resourceful women. Every man, every reasonable man wants a wonderful woman. Go and, go and check. So the easiest way to get a husband is the what? To become wonderful. Simple. You will choose who you will marry. Not, not that they are not. You will make choice. I am prophesying to the young ladies hearing me now. You will make choice. Who you will marry. You will make choice. The number one thing you should do is to humble yourself. As a woman. You humble. Number one thing is to do what? Humble. No matter how educated you are, do what? Humble yourself. No matter how intelligent you are, do what? Humble yourself. No matter how resourceful you are, do what? Humble yourself. No matter how smart you are, do what? Humble yourself. No matter how beautiful you are, even if you are so beautiful that when you appear like this, even without neighbor light, your face can give light to the house. That is, you are so beautiful that you don't need generator. You don't need neighbor. <laughs> your beauty has entered the house like this. No light. Your face what? Illuminate everywhere. What do you do? Still humble yourself. Still humble yourself. When you are talking to somebody, you are talking to a man. Know that you are talking to a man. If you are in a place of authority in your office as a woman, maybe as head of department or as a manager or as a supervisor in charge of any department. Respect everybody in that place. Then watch out what will happen. Everybody in that place will what? Will respect you. You know, you know this thing called respect is a give and take thing. You know, I look at some people, they just, they, you are not lifting yourself and bringing people down. They will not lift you. You hear what I'm saying? You are, you are in the middle of the world. You did it. Hey! Can, can people see me? Can people see me? I am this. I am that. You now praise yourself. Then when you come to people, you 
talk them that you insult them, they are looking at you. And one thing human being hates is what? Insult. Hmm. See, the moment they insult a human being, you remind him his problem. <laughs> the moment you insult a human being, you do what? You remind him what he has passed through in life. So they don't want you to remind them their past. The moment you insult a person, you are reminding him what? All his try, all his problem, the things he passed through in life. That's what you are reminding him. So as a wife, you do what? You humble yourself. That's the point I'm making. You humble yourself as a wife. Humble yourself as a wife. Humble yourself. And as a wife, you know the secret of your husband and never use it against him. Know the secret of your husband and never use it what? Against him. You know, you know, see, let me tell you, maturity is one thing that will make you to last. What did I say? I can't hear you well. Maturity is one thing that will make you to last and remain relevant. Maturity will make you to last and remain relevant. If you know the secret of somebody, a man, you know his secret. Never use it against him. Never use it to insult him. Use it to protect him. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Understand it. As a wife, make sure you make peace between your husband and his family members. Very, very important. Don't be a room divider. Don't be what? Don't be what? Don't be a room divider. You get into the family. You see that your husband is handy. Your children are still tender. You can help them. Tell them to help whosoever. Never block your husband to help the brothers or the sisters. Never block your husband to help the siblings. If you do that, they will forgive you forever. Did you hear what I said? If you do that, that family will not forgive you forever. And pray that nothing happened to your husband. Just pray very well that nothing what? If anything happened to your husband, you will know you are stuck in that family. I am telling you the truth. See, I am teaching you what, if you, if you practice it, it will benefit you. I used to tell people, I said, you won't forget me now. The teaching I am giving you, I will be bold anytime, any day in my life. If I see you, I won't be ashamed. Why? Because I drop something in your life that will not put you down. I drop something that will always what? Lift you up. Yes. That's why people will call me and say, Hey, sir, I'm very sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Why are they saying forgive me? Why are they saying forgive me? For not calling me. For not coming to see me. Is it not? Why? Because of what I have what? Done in their life. Because of what God have used me to do in their life. Never enter the family and be a rune divider. Their mother-in-law will now become a witch. Their father-in-law will become a wizard. Their brothers will become, you now begin to lay allegation on them. You now begin to, this one is a thief. The other one is this. To, as a way to do what? To drive all of them so that only you will do what? Take over and now sit down and now begin to possess. Let me tell you, there are some family will enter. Huh? A family that doesn't have the fear of God, they will fight you spiritually. You hear what I'm saying? See, it's not every family you will be behaving like that and go free. You. I am teaching you listening to the word of God. There are families you enter and live like that, they will attack you. So this attitude I am teaching you now will help you. What will you benefit? Your brother, your husband, and the brother. They have been brother before the man knew you. Huh? <laughs> Listen to me. That is the way I think. That is the way I reason. They have been brother before 
you somewhere one day. These people have been brothers and sisters before you, 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 you knew their husband, their, their, their brother, who is now your husband. Now the man now begin to tell you things that happen in the family. Tell him that that is not why I am here. If there's any problem between you and your brothers, settle it. They did this to me. My mother did me like this. My mother treated me this. My father treated me like this. This one did me like this. The other one did me like this. Tell him. Forgive them. The man said, don't tell me that. I said, tell him. Okay. Just take your time. But I think you are not trying to. Because anything you are doing now, they will say, I'm the one that is sending you. Anything you are doing now, that's why I'm talking to you. They will say, I am the one that is sending you. Anything you can do for them, do for them. Praise God. Is somebody hearing me? Your husband is in position to help the brothers. You blocked him. You want your children to. Your children cannot be everything. Yeah, I am telling you the truth. Your children cannot be what? Cannot be everything. They want, this one is this. This one is this. This one is this. This one is this. This one. Has it finished? Continue now. They can be everything for you. They can be. They, this is my brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws. They are wicked people. Among them. Among them. If you live your life well, one will be on your side. Did you hear what I said? If you play your card well, one will be on your side. I am teaching you practical life. Somebody was talking, some, saying something the other day. He was talking about a bad teacher. And he said that a bad teacher is that teacher that will teach you things that you will not see in the exam. You are learning a copy note. Huh? You hear what I'm saying? Huh? You are copy note, copy note, copy note, reading. But when you enter exam, number one is not there. Number two is not there. Uh uh. That teacher is what? Bad teacher. <laughs> so I am teaching you what you will see in the exam. The examination of life. So I should be your best friend. Praise God. Let me hear your amen very loud. Yes. Don't enter a house. Young ladies, hear me. As you are falling in love, as you are falling in love, be careful though. As you are falling in love, eh? Let the love not keep you. Let the love not keep you down. Did you understand what I said? As you fall in love, you know you fall in love now. Eh? Let the love not keep you on the floor. <laughs> Let it not keep you there. This is a call for love. At my age now, I've got to understand what the real love is. What the real love? Because this thing you call love can take your life. For God so loved the world that he what? He do God his son. This thing you call love can take human being life. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So I've come to understand that love is very, very expensive. It's more than going to a fast food joint and eat and drink and come back. It's bigger than that. It's more than taking selfie. It's more than, it's more than going to swimming pool to bed. You, you hear what I'm saying? At my age now, I've, I've known what love is. Love is a responsibility. It's a covenant. What did I say? It's a covenant. It's a work. So when you enter the family, don't divide. Don't scatter. You hear what I'm saying? Don't scatter the family. Don't divide the family. As, as a wife, help to unite the family. That's the point I am making. As a wife, what do you do? Help to do what? Help to unite the family. Help to unite the family. You are in a family. You are looking down on the younger ones to your husband. Because... Because your husband is rich. This one have not. He don't know tomorrow. You may think your husband is the overall now. He don't know where God is taking this one. They may not beg you food. You say, after all, who will I beg food? After all, what will they do for me? In this life, 
seeing the good you are doing and stand. You are, in fact, you are good will make you to win others to yourself. You are good will make you to lose, to make her to lose her supporters. <laughs> yes. In fact, you are good will reveal how bad she is if she's not willing to change. You will hear people say, upon all this lady is doing for this woman, I don't know this woman is this bad. Huh? What expose her? Is your good? As a wife, praise God. As a wife, help to manage the resource of your husband. Help to manage the resource of your husband. Help to do what? Help to manage the resource of your husband. When I'm teaching you on high test, high test, high test, high test, high test, a woman, a woman, a woman should manage her test. You know, some women are richer than their husband. Huh? Some women are richer than their husband. There's a family I've been ministering to. That woman is richer than her husband. But yet, that 
sure that you maintain the feet that their husband loves, that attracts their husband. You are the only person permitted to seduce your husband. <laughs> so maintain the feet he loves. You hear what I'm saying? Do what? Maintain the feet he loves. So to be a woman is work. That's why many fail. Praise God. That's why many what? Many fail. Control your sleeping habits. You are surprised to hear that. As a woman, as a woman, as a wife, what do you do? You must control your sleeping habits. Don't oversleep. Don't oversleep. As a wife, you don't oversleep. Because you wake up early. You enter the kitchen. You take care of things. You prepare meal. You prepare breakfast. You take care of the children. Husbands should also help their wives. Yes. Don't say I'm a man. The child is your child. The house is your house. The wife is your wife. Is it not? Don't live as a stranger in your own house. What did I say? This one is for the men. Yeah, the man. He don't do anything. He just enter. He sit down. Eat food. Ask my wife. I cook at times. At times I used to cook. And my children are aware that I'm not lying. All of them will wait. They will come. At times when I finish, I call priest to come and test. <laughs> you are surprised. Priest will come and test. And I was say, I say, hi, I say, ah, daddy, this is wonderful. I start, I was say, how, how many percent? I thought they would score me low. I thought they would score me high. <laughs> One day, when I asked my wife, I say, how many percent would they score me? He said, I score you 70 something. I said, 70 bucks. Why didn't you give, give me 100? <laughs> so, so, sometimes you cook. You hear what I'm saying? See, eh? Make, make, make your house wonderful. Make, make life pleasurable for yourself. Learn from me. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. There are some places you enter. Hey. He won't even hear teaching about marriage because the man and woman, you hear what I'm saying? The man can teach other topic, teach other topic, preach other topic, and write the flow. But he don't you hardly hear him talk about what? Marriage. Because of how they live in their house. So you must control your sleeping habits as, as, a, as a wife. Praise God. Control your sleeping habits. Hmm? Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Always be readily available to satisfy your husband. Always be what? Readily what? To do what? I want to hear your voice now. To do what? To satisfy your husband. Always readily available to satisfy your husband. Readily available. I was talking, saying something about, uh, about God. The Lord said to Isaiah, to Cyrus, say, I will open before you what? The two leaf gate. And the gate shall not be what? Short day and night. So let the gate not be short day and what? Day and night. Let it be open. Let's rest our feet. <laughs> oh, Kapo Shatalabosi. I will open before you what? Let the gate be what? Continually. Is it not? Isaiah 60, 11. Thy gates shall be what? Open how many days? Continually. Say it now. Have you forgotten the scripture? Isaiah 60, 11. For thy gates shall be what? How long? They are. It shall not be what? No matter what happens. <laughs> Even if it's raining. Hot weather, cold weather. Misunderstanding in the house have nothing to do with the ghetto. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Have nothing. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? When I teach you something, some of you will not be looking outside. You are not seeing anybody outside, though. You'll be looking at the ceiling. 
Holy Spirit, help me. Some of you will not be writing just according to notes. Some of you will be correcting some things. Some of you, I understand as a father. I understand what is going on. Because the Lord is ministering to your heart. Lift up your hands. Yes. This is what caused problem. As a man, you must be available. Yes. You say, hey, is there only the man that you come? Sometimes you should initiate. You should introduce. You should, you should start. You know, in much at times, Chelsea is playing with a uh, man you. Eh? Sometimes they will not throw the coin. Is it not? They say choose. They will not choose. Is it true? Sometimes you will see Chelsea will be the one to start. Eh? It should not always be Chelsea that will start match. Sometimes man you should not work also what? Start match. Look at how they are looking at me. <laughs> yes, yes. Praise God. Chelsea can start today. Tomorrow man you can what? Start. Yes. That is how it is. It's not one person's responsibility to do what? To start the match. Because when the match starts, everybody will play it. Eh? And at the end of the game, eh? everybody becomes the winner. Is it not? Lift your hands up. You see people, look at how they are looking at me. Look at how they are looking at me. <laughs> Wave your hand towards heaven and begin to tell God thank you for keeping you alive to hear these wonderful things. Just, just begin to thank God. Don't thank you for any other thing. Just thank him for making you to be alive to hear the things you have heard this morning. Lord, I bless you. Let me be a wife. Make me a resourceful wife. Make me a woman. Make me a wonderful woman. Make me. Help me, O oh God. Strengthen me. Help me to humble myself. Let me humble myself. Lord, help me to humble myself. Help me to play my role as a woman. Help me to fulfill my purpose as a woman. As a wife. Help me, oh God, to play my role as a helpmeet all the days of my life.